welcome to Ads Work on Connected to India. My name is Himanshu Varma. I'm absolutely delighted to welcome Dr. Mukesh Aghi, President and CEO of US India Strategic Partnership Forum, a bipartisan think tank based out of Washington, D.C. Dr. Mukesh Aghi, finally, it's good to have you on At Work. Good to speak to you, Himanshu. Thank you for having me on your show. Uh, let's start from how did US India Strategic Partnership Forum come about, its founding story, and how has the journey been so far? So sometime in 2017, uh, the eminent uh, Indian American leadership such as uh, uh, Ajay Banga, Indra Nui, Satya Nadella at Microsoft, Shantanu uh, at uh, Adobe, and uh, Raj Subramanian at FedEx, we all started debating that we need an independent institution which kind of binds the two democracies together. And we launched US-India Strategic Partnership Forum and the word we mm -hmm. use strategic was critical because the relationship is not just about people to people or business to business, but geopolitically, strategically, it's important the two countries align itself. And that's how USISP was launched. With the US presidential election about to happen or will be happening next year, what are some of your strategic priorities? Well, I think you have to understand uh, we are bipartisan and uh, you look at Obama was there, strong relationship with Prime Minister Modi, then came in President Trump, strong relationship with uh, Prime Minister Modi, and now President Biden, again, strong relationship with Prime Minister Modi. I think uh, Prime Minister Modi is one leader who has consistently kept a very positive relationship with every leader or the president who has come in. So what is driving this relationship is multiple factors. One is geopolitics. When we look at what's happening uh, with the rise of China, the assertiveness of China, and India's border dispute with China, uh, India needs partners to manage that. And I think that's where geopolitically U.S. comes in very, very strongly. That's number one. Second is for India to maintain its economic growth for the next 10, 15 years itself to elevate people out of poverty. It needs a lot of investment and technology, and they will come mainly from the United States. So you need that relationship also. And the third factor is that from a skills perspective, as U.S. ages and India's median age is 26, India can provide substantial mobility to professionals who can fill the gap on skills. For example, today we have a shortage of a million software engineers in the United States. So we need that win-win value proposition between two countries. And I think that's where we see the relationship getting stronger. There has been a significant increase in U.S.-India bilateral trade from about $80 billion three years. This year, 22-23 uh, is supposed to be $128 billion. What have been some of the key drivers? Well, the growth is, is driven by economic interest. For example, uh, India started importing substantial amount of energy from the United States, especially natural gas. Uh, and that drove uh, the trade to a higher level. India started exporting a lot of goods and services to the United States. It's a large market. And, and so we see that trend moving forward. So I think it is the uh, economic interest which is driving, not the political consideration. Uh, in the U.S. is a lucrative market for India pharma companies. Uh, for for uh, U.S. defense companies, India is a lucrative market. So I think it is the business interest which is driving this relationship. Over the years, there has been a significant increase uh, in interest in politics amongst Indian Americans. Uh, what was the inflection point? And uh, can one generalize about the political leanings of Indians in America? Well, you have to understand that the Indian immigrants come from a diverse democracy. And so they are very, very used to dealing with a, a loud, noisy democracy. And U.S. is the same as India from that perspective. That's one. Two is Indians also are the most affluent minority group from a financial perspective. And they also feel they need to contribute uh, to the country they have immigrated. And one aspect would be political participation. If you look at, we have now five uh, Indian Americans 
as as congressmen and women. Uh, we look at from a state level. Every year, more and more Indian Americans are running for the election, and they're winning itself. Biden administration has appointed roughly 150 plus Indian American in its administration itself. And uh, so, what we are seeing is 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 one is the contribution, participation, and active uh, effort by Indian Americans to get into the political sphere. Now, what is the leaning? Are they Republican? Are they Democrat? What we are seeing is is initially. Uh, two uh, election ago in the federal election, uh, we had only 20% voting Republican. And last election, uh, we saw almost 30 plus percent voting Republican. Indians tend to be uh, fiscally conservative, but on social issues, they tend to be liberal. So we'll see what happens in the next election, but the trend seems to be uh, more and more are moving Republicans and leaving Democratic Party also. Dr. Agi, once again, thank you very much for speaking to us and thanks for again for being on At Work. Thank you, Ivanshu. A pleasure to be on your show.